If I can ask everyone to gather around in front of the podium here, and uh, for anyone who may be speaking, if you could join us uh, up on the platform, please. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum and good evening. Mayor Patrick Brown, faith leaders, community leaders, neighbors, friends, and family. We are gathered here tonight to remember the victims of the New Zealand mosque attacks of one week ago. We are here tonight not only in remembrance, but also in reflection and resolve. It was Friday, March 15th, just as Jummah prayers were getting underway, that a gunman opened fire at the Al Noor Mosque and the Linwood Mosque in Christchurch, New Zealand. 50 people, 50 Muslim worshippers, men, women and children were brutally gunned down in a despicable act of terror fueled by hate, Islamophobia, anti-immigrant sentiment and white supremacist ideology. We gather here today to remember those who were killed, the many victims who were injured and whose lives have been changed forever, and the families who have endured unspeakable heartbreak. We respect and honor the heroes who put their own lives at risk to save the lives of others, as well as first responders, faith leaders, government leaders, and everyday global citizens who have demonstrated commitment to the values of love, respect, compassion, and solidarity. I pray that the words shared by our speakers tonight implore each and every one of us to reflect on why these tragedies continue to occur. It was less than two months ago that I was right here at Brampton City Hall with Mayor Patrick with many of you here tonight, reflecting on the two-year anniversary of the Quebec mosque shooting. We must resolve, resolve ourselves to taking action and tackling the underlying issues of racism, hate, and intolerance that are driving forces behind these acts of terrorism. While it saddens me that we are even in a state where a vigil such as this even needs to be held, I choose to be here with a sense of hope and determination for our future. I am pleased to co mc tonight with a wonderful young Muslim Ali Amjad, whose presence here reminds me of why all of this matters. We have young people and generations to come that we must empower, protect, and mentor, such that they inherit and preserve a world that prioritizes humanity, justice, and acceptance. I invite my co-MC Ali to the stage to share his opening remarks. Assalamu alaikum and good evening to all of you. First off, thank you to each and every one of you for taking the time out to be here with us tonight. Uh, to all of our non-Muslim friends, our allies, our brothers and sisters of all different faiths, uh, it means a lot to us that you've chosen to stand here next to us. Your solidarity with our community at this difficult time gives me the hope that the world I'm stepping into as a young person and as a young professional is the one still full of goodness and compassion. As a young Muslim male growing up in the Western world, I'm aware of how some may choose to take a look at me. I've learned over time that I may be overlooked, undervalued, disliked, or hated simply because of my ethnicity or my faith. I know to expect extra scrutiny at the airport security because of my last name. I know I may be less likely to get a certain job because of where I come from. But last week I also learned one other thing. I learned that I may be a target and a victim of hate crime simply because of my background and simply because of the fact that I choose to pray at a mosque. I'm here tonight to share my sadness, my disappointment and my fear but also to share my feelings of anger. These acts of hate, bigotry and terror are becoming less of a shock to me each and every time. I'm not surprised anymore that these events happen because somehow we allow for the hate and bigotry to grow and to multiply. I want to channel my sadness and anger into something that can be a force of change. I worry about my future in Canada. I worry for young minorities and vulnerable people all around the world. Whether they're Muslim, whether they're black. Whether they're Muslim, they're black, they're refugees, or from the LGBTQ community. The list really goes on and on. And I believe everyone has the right to life and the right to safety. And hopefully we can get ourselves to a place where human rights are respected and valued by everyone all over the globe. As I call up our first speaker, I do want to acknowledge that we are located on the treaty lands and territory of the Mississaugas of the New Credit. With that being said, I'd like to welcome to the podium Imam Hafiz Durab and Abdullah from the Brampton Islamic Center for a Quranic recitation.
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا استعينوا بالصبر والصلاة إن الله مع الصابرين ولا تقولوا لمن يقتل في سبيل الله أموات بل أحياء ولكن لا تشعرون ولنبلونكم بشيء من الخوف والجوع ونقص من الأموال والأنفس والثمرات وبشر الصابرين الذين إذا أصابتهم مصيبة الذين إذا أصابتهم مصيبة قالوا قالوا إنا لله وإنا إليه راجعون أولئك عليهم صلوات من ربهم ورحمة وأولئك هم المهتدون صدق الله العظيم Thank you السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته My dear respected friends, relatives, elders, community leaders, Mayor Brown May the peace, mercy and blessings of God Almighty be with each and every single one of you our brother recited to us some verses from the Holy Qur'an. In verse number 152, God Almighty reminds us and he says, Remember me and I will remember you. Remember me, God Almighty, and God Almighty will remember you in your time of need. All of us have acquaintances and friends. We have that friend in our life or that acquaintance who calls us when he needs something. We know that he is not equal or she is not equal to the one who phones us every week to make sure that us and our family is well. God Almighty goes on and He says that people of faith, O oh people of faith, prayers and patience is what will save you. An event like this, a gathering like this, where we display solidarity with one another and we persevere together as one community, as one family, this is what will help us get over the hump. God Almighty reminds us that we will definitely experience hunger and pain and loss of life. Some of us will be afflicted with poverty. Some of us will lose the closest ones to us. But the ones who persevere and have patience together are the ones who will overcome it. I want to conclude with a story. A story that many of us are familiar with perhaps from our traditions and that is the story of Cain and Abel, the story of Habil and Qabil, the two sons of Adam. Whether you are familiar with the Islamic tradition or not, you may have heard the story. Adam had two sons, one of them had a dispute with his brother. He attempted to incite hatred in the heart of his brother and to convince him that we should fight. And his innocent brother responded to him and he told him, there is no way that you will convince me to pick up arms against you. And I leave all of us with that message today, that there is no way we can allow anyone to incite hatred and animosity in our heart. Let us be like the brother who told his brother who was abusing him, I will not be like you. There is no place for hatred in my heart. There is no place for animosity in my heart. If that is your sickness, I pray for you and I am free from that. Thank you very much for your attentive listening and may God Almighty bless one and all. 
I'd like to call to the stage um, someone who is a champion for diversity and inclusion in Brampton and Canada, and a wonderful friend of the Muslim community, our Mayor Patrick Brown. Uh, thank you, uh, Free and Ali. And if I could ask uh, City Council to join me uh, uh, on stage as we say some words on behalf of the city. We have with us uh, Councillor uh, Jeff Bowman, uh, Councillor Harkirit to sing, Martin McGiros, Rowena Santos, Paul Vicente, Pat Fertini, uh, Gurpreet uh, Dillon, uh, and Charmaine Williams. Uh, I want to thank uh, Dr. Cannon Ali for leading us uh, through tonight's vigil. Uh, thank you to all of you who will join us, who are joining us this evening. Um, I see that love for all, hatred for none sign, and what a beautiful uh, expression of how the community feels this evening. We gather tonight at Brampton City Hall to show that our city grieves with our Muslim brothers and sisters in New Zealand, here in Brampton and across the globe. We stand with the members, um, we stand together, united as Brampton City Council, together to express our deepest sympathy to the family and friends of the 50 murdered Muslim wo women, men and children and those injured as a result of the terrorist attack on two mosques in Christchurch last Friday. We recognize a number of elected officials who are gathered with, uh, with us here tonight. I understand this evening we have Peel Region Chair Nando Yanika, MP Sonia S Sidhu, MPP Kevin Yard, MPP Garatan Singh, Trustee Belvir Sohi. Uh, thank you for uh, showing your uh, love and support for the Muslim community. To acts of hate, Islamophobia, and terrorism, we respond with love in our city. Tonight is an opportunity for our community to gather to express our sympathy and our sadness. It is also a time to promote religious freedom, tolerance, and, com and compassion, and we will do that by praying together, out loud here at Brampton City Hall, in the many faiths of our diverse community. No one should feel unsafe in our city. Those who gather in prayer should feel safe, especially at the many places of worship, masjids, gurdwaras, churches, and temples, across our city and around the world. And our Chief of Police, Chris McCord, is here tonight. Uh, um, and I thought it was a, a great gesture uh, of uh, love for the Muslim community. The One of the first things the Chief did in light of those horrific attacks was to make sure that we had officers attend all the masjids to make sure no one felt unsafe to pray. To say that we live in a city where uh, we uh, respect religious freedom, where we're proud of religious freedom. And so I hand... Uh, for the quick leadership of our Chief of Police on that. In January, we gathered inside City Hall to remember the sorrow our country felt after the senseless attack on the Centre Cultural Islamique de Quebec in saint Foy, which claimed the lives of Muslims gathered in prayer. As Faria mentioned, uh, we talked about that, that act of hate, who would have thought that we'd be gathering again so soon. We gathered that morning to remember but also to take action against Islamophobia. We must confront this violent extremism to create uh, a city and a world where we all feel safe. And I would note in some legislatures around the world when the issue of Islamophobia came up it was a source of division. Here at, at Brampton City Hall in your city there was no division. When we, when we had the, proclama the proclamation uh, declaring uh, we condemn Islamophobia and, and condemn hate and we had the day of action against uh, Islamophobia, every member of council stood uh, to support that. Every member of council was there uh, for that uh, opportunity to express uh, our support for the Muslim community. I would note it isn't lost on us that today it is also the International Day for the Elimination of Racial Discrimination, March 21st, 1960, police opened fire and killed 69 people at a peaceful demonstration in Sharpeville, South Africa, where people gathered against apartheid pass laws. This year, the United Nations theme for the elimination of racial discrimination is mitigating and countering rising nationalist populism and extreme, extreme supremacist ideologies. Today, as a city, we condemn the nationalist populism that advances hate or repressive practices and policies that, that hard individuals or groups on the basis of their race, ethnicity, national origin, or religion. 
As I mentioned in my statement last week, this murderous hatred by white supremacists must be stopped. We must take action together. In Brampton, we express our collective mourning by lowering the flags across city facilities, by lighting up the clock tower, the, co the colors of New Zealand, red and blue, and symbolic gestures to the citizens of New Zealand, that we and we've also set up a book of condolences inside City Hall this week. Along with members of council, uh, I have signed this book, and I encourage all of you to sign it before leaving tonight to express your sympathy. An online book is also available at Brampton.ca. Residents across Brampton and global residents have also taken the opportunity to be part of Brampton's book, including so far sympathies from Germany and Turkey. The book will be shared through uh, the New Zealand High Commission with the community and the two mosques in Christchurch. And so I just wanted to close by saying I want to thank all the speakers tonight. We've got a number of faith leaders here to pray with us to express uh, um, our support for the Muslim community. Uh, I want to thank the fact that we have uh, our entire council united in our love for the Muslim community and to say that you live in a city where it, it doesn't matter where you come from, it doesn't matter the color of your skin, it doesn't matter uh, what God you worship, you live in a city that is proud of our diversity. You live in a city that is proud uh, of the fact that we are a mosaic of people and uh, tonight we stand uh, shoulder to shoulder with the Muslim community to express our sorrows and sympathies on that horrific terrorist act. Thank you for being here with us tonight to, to join us as a city collectively to grieve and, and, and to sympathize with this horrific act. Well, thank you, Mayor Brown, for your comforting words and for your commitment to the well-being of the Muslim community. Next, I'd like to call on stage Dr. Fria Khan, a board member with the National Council of Canadian Mus Muslims, to come and say a few words. With an organizational mandate of protecting human rights, civil liberties, and public advocacy, the National Council of Canadian Muslims was horrified by the deadly terrorist attacks in New Zealand. The attack, just like the attack on the Islamic Cultural Center of Quebec in 2007, is yet another deeply disturbing indication that Islamophobia has deadly consequences for Muslim communities. Let there be no doubt that this government openly idolized mass shooters, including the Quebec mass shooter Alexandre Bissonnette. And while some of our elected leaders initially chose not to mention Muslim or mosque in denouncing the Christchurch attacks, the reality is that these horrific shootings Along with, Quebec City, along with Quebec City, have left Canadian Muslims, and indeed Muslims around the world, feeling very vulnerable and unsafe. It is therefore essential that our elected leaders speak out clearly and unequivocally against such attacks and name them for the Islamophobic terrorist attacks that they are. It is cowardly and heinous to perpetrate such an act. It is negligent to not acknowledge them, and it's reckless to not act upon them. To not name them for what they are is to negate and to minimize the value of people's identity and the role of targeted hate and discrimination in these acts. Our elected officials must be held accountable to the utmost degree of integrity and leadership if we are to curb the spread and impact of hate, whether that be online, in schools, in the workplace, or in the media. Just a few months ago, a far-right extremist group in Alberta visited two Edmonton mosques during Friday prayers in a display of intimidation. At NCCM, we regularly receive reports of Canadian Muslims and reports from Canadian Muslims and community institutions facing hate, discrimination, and veiled threats. Therefore, the rise in Islamophobia and hate in Canada also requires real policy solutions, not platitudes. This will require government, law enforcement, educators, civil society, all stakeholders to come together. This no one community can do this alone, and certainly not the Muslim community alone because this is not an issue for one community. It is a Canadian issue and it must be a priority for all of us. The NCCM is working hand in hand with partners at all levels of government and civil society to ensure that we move forward together on these policy challenges to ensure that the Canada that we cherish remains for our children and future generations. Um, thank you very much. With that, uh, I'd actually like to call upon uh, Sister Rabia Khadr to the stage to share some words.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, we stand um, together here to grieve together, to reflect, and to move on. Another horrific act that took so many lives unnecessarily. I speak on behalf of the Muslim Council of Peel, representing a number of NGOs and mosques within Peel region, within Mississauga, Brampton, Calvin communities. And what I would like to highlight is that we're very grateful. We're grateful to our law enforcement. We're grateful to our local leadership, to Mayor Brown, to counselors, to everyone that stepped up to the plate to make us feel secure, to reassure us. We immediately went into action on behalf of our places of worship and our community to request support from law enforcement to ensure that Friday prayers right after New Zealand, people felt safe going to the mosque, the mosques were protected and patrolled, and our law enforcement stood to the challenge. The chief actually went around making personal rounds, and we're very, very grateful for that. We received tremendous support from our interfaith communities, and again, we're very grateful for that. What we're reminded of is how important it is for us to be resilient, to, to stand together, to count on each other, to give strength to the fact that we will have resolve. We will fight Islamophobia. We will fight hate in all its ugly forms. These are our Canadian values and we must protect them. We will not just be a tolerant society, we will be a respectful and inclusive society. Today, yes, as Mayor Brown remarked, it is the International Day for the Elimination of Racial Discrimination. We have a long way to go, folks, to eliminate hatred that breeds, that, and, and that is bred through rhetoric that empowers nationalism, rooted in supremacy and extremist ideologies. So today, and here on forward, we continue hand in hand with our brothers and sisters in humanity, with our interfaith leaders, our elected officials, our law enforcement, to ensure that we protect and preserve a safe and inclusive society, where we all feel safe to worship in our houses of worship. This is our diversity, this is our strength, and we will find that resolve, and we will fight back. We will not let hatred thrive and divide this society. Thank you. Thank you, Rabia. Um, and I fail to clarify that Rabia is the Executive Director with the Muslim Council Appeal. Next, I'd like to call up, up to the stage Rabbi Audrey Pollock, who is the Chair of the Interfaith Council of Peel. Salam Aleikum, Shalom Aleichem, peace be unto you. Dear friends, we are here tonight to remember and to pray for the 50 people who were brutally murdered and for the 50 more who were injured in the attacks on the Al Nur Mosque and the Linwood Mosque. Many of them, we now know their names and their faces and the funerals have begun to take place. We are learning their stories. We need to look at the pictures, speak their names, tell of their lives, their laughter, their talents and their passions. We must do this so that every day the blessings that they brought into this world continue to reverberate outward. In my tradition, in Judaism, we say zikonam livracha, their memories are for a blessing. Standing here tonight, we must also recognize that they are not the only victims of this attack. To the hundreds of Muslims who were praying inside those holy spaces when the gunmen entered, to the family members of those who died, and those who were wounded, to those who came to the aid of those who were struck down in this horrible act of terror, we see you, too, who will now bear the psychological scars for the rest of your lives. We see the faces of those who are family members of victims and survivors, friends and loved ones, 
and of our Muslim community here in Canada and the millions of Muslims around the world who will enter mosques and go to Friday, Friday prayers with grieving hearts, with fear for themselves and for their children, and with a deeper awareness of their own vulnerability. Now more than ever, we must recommit ourselves to kindness, to compassion, and strengthening our communities. Together we must speak out against hatred, bigotry, discrimination, and prejudice and continue our work towards peace and understanding. For in response to hate, we must not be silent. We will continue to gather, to pray, to celebrate, and to stand in solidarity and in support of all those who are in need. So we pray, O oh God, bring healing and comfort to those who are hurt and scared and sad and give us strength to work towards repairing the brokenness of our world. May God watch over us all and give us courage and strength to work together against hatred and violence. Thank you, Rabbi. I'd like to call to the stage Imam Hamid Khlimi from the Seda Khatija Center. I will repeat the very verses that our young Hafid read earlier as Muslims. And we invite our friends and brothers and sisters in humanity to say Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un Truly to God we belong and truly to Him we will return. I only have very short time to say a few things. We had many vigils in the last week. We thank all those who attended, especially people who have shown leadership. In tough times show greatness of people. But I have to acknowledge as I'm standing on this land, and of course we have to acknowledge the land of the First Nations and the tribes that lived here thousands of years and persecuted and erased from this land, many of them. I pray for their souls. But as I'm standing in this, I would like to acknowledge the leadership of Mayor Patrick Brown and Mayor Bonnie for coming on January 29th and supporting the Muslims for the action against Islamophobia. It is in times of peace that leadership is shown and in times of, uh, of, of crisis. What New Zealand shootings revealed, they revealed four things and I'll go quickly. It revealed the face, the ugly face of terrorism which has no religion, no morality, no faith and no mercy. If you read the writings of the perpetrator, you understand that unfortunately those who are spreading fear of Islam, Islamophobia, those people who are spreading hate against Muslims, whether Sunnis or Shias, those who are spreading hate against immigrants, they have, as you see in the writings of uh, the perpetrator, that's where he fed and many are being fed by that hatred and sense of supremacy. We need to stand with the people who are standing with us, leaders who have shown leadership, stand strongly united across all faiths and ethnic groups in this beautiful country of Canada because we can't take any more peace for granted. Unfortunately, ugliness is like cancer, is spreading everywhere. The spiritual ugliness of hatred against those who are different. Also, it revealed, as you see, the 50 faces of those who died, who Muslims are, whether they are women or men, immigrants or native to the land, they all seek peace and they all seek mercy of God. They're not perfect, no human being is perfect, but today and tomorrow and yesterday, we're reading and watching these images of beautiful people who have gone to the upper world. May God bless their souls. We are here to remember them, but they are Muslims like all human beings. And the idea that the Muslims are against peace, they want to take over land and government and spread their ideas is wrong. Unfortunately, we have some demonic powers spreading wrong ideas. Those are the faces of the Muslims, those 50 faces. Last thing, third thing that we have learned from this, that we should work together and that interfaith work is very important. Tomorrow, 
15 mosques will be surrounded by rings of peace rabbi, from the Jewish Sabu community the, and other faiths. Uh, when we had shooting in of Pittsburgh in November, uh, Muslim Bridge. community went and formed rings of peace. Sunnis and Shia are working together. And we formed around most of the synagogues of GTA. We are receiving many synagogues tomorrow and we welcome them. Some of them last Saturday, they even they had the Sabbath and made the effort and came and joined us. We should acknowledge these people, but we have to ask ourselves, why they are acting like this? Because there is something that transcends our differences and religions, something that is deeper. It is our humanity. It is our understanding of what makes a human being that makes us feel. Thank you for being here. And the fourth thing I want to mention that is revealed in this, that it's sad, but great things happen sometimes in this worst time. Sometimes we have to go very low to go high. And this is what is happening. We pray for the souls. Thank you for being here. Salam to come with us and stand together so that the people inside the mosque can pray in peace and without fear. I've read that the victims varied in age from 3 to 71. 50 lives. And in my tradition and in many of yours, as you all know, each life represents a world and we've lost 50 worlds. El Malach Hamim, O merciful God, we pray for those beautiful souls, and may you care for them and treasure them in eternal peace. We pray as well, O God, for healing, complete healing for those who are wounded. We pray for those who are broken in heart and for their families and those who also are in fear. And God, we pray as well. We turn to you with questions because we ask, why does this happen? And why is there evil in the world? And we have no answers right now. And some of us are angry. And some of us are grieving. And some of us just don't know what to think. And so God, we pray that you give us resolve and that you remind us that for every one person who commits evil, there are hundreds like those people here who stand together for good, who stand together for tolerance, who understand that even though we have our differences, we have so much more in common. Because as we learn in my tradition, you created us from one individual, from Adam, so that we know that no one person is better than any other person. And so we pray, God, give us resolve to turn all these feelings we have into positive, peaceful action so that we can finally destroy these pockets of evil that arise against us. We are stronger. We are bigger. We shall overcome them. Can you hear that song? So may it be your will. Amen. Thank you for those kind words. Uh, next, I'd like to call upon Pastor Jamie Holcomb from the North Bramley United Church uh, to come and say a few words. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for being here tonight, and thanks for all those who organized this gathering. Like yourselves, I was, and continue to be, to be honest, shocked and dismayed, deeply saddened by this horrific tragedy. I've been invited to pray tonight, and I have to tell you, it still feels surreal to be here doing this. It seems like this isn't something that should be even possible in our world, and yet it is. As I come to pray tonight, as I, get, I was thinking of offering a moment of silence, but I don't know if it's possible in downtown Brampton. But Jesus' prayer that he offered as his life came to an end, this was his last prayer. You know what it was about? It was a prayer for unity. And I think maybe that's 
one of the best things we can pray for here, for us, for our city, for the people of New Zealand, for this planet that we live on, for unity, for oneness. Let us pray for that. I do invite us to take a moment of silence if we could, and then I'll lead us in a prayer for unity. Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, as we come together this evening, we pray for the people of New Zealand, for Christ Church in particular, for all those who are grieving, for those whose lives have been turned upside down, that you would offer your healing strength in ways that bring a, a depth of love and life even in the midst of this. We pray for our city, one of the most diverse on our planet, that we really would be people who love for all, with hatred for none, that there would be a uniting of different faiths and traditions in ways that respect and love and your life rise up within. For each of us here, oh God, that we would be bearers of your light to this world, that we would spread love where there is hatred, that we would stand up when the opportunity arises, and that together, together as we unite, that you would bless our city and do that even through each of us that are here this evening. In your name, O oh God, we pray. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor, for those kind words in your prayer. Uh, next, I'd like to call upon Ms. Rosie Kaur Chohan from the Sikh Sangit of Canada to come and uh, share her words with us. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for having me today, um, representing the Sikh community of Canada. We have come together as one for peace. We have come together in prayer for strength. We have come together with love as a family. From the six, six scriptures, I will be reciting the importance of oneness. Tonight's gathering is all about that, love and equality. The Sikh community here is to support our brothers and sisters who have endured that suffering and that pain. We are here for those that have lost their loved ones. May we remember them all through this prayer. एक नूर ते सब जग उपजया कोण पदे को मंदे लोगा परमना पूलो हो पाई परमना पूलो पाई खालक 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 मैं खालक पूर्ण हो सब खाई माती एक अनेक पास कर साजी साजन हाँ ना कच पोच माटी के पांडे ना कच पोच कुमार सब में सचा एको सोई इस ताकिया सब कच होई भुकम पचान सो एको जाने बंदा कहीं है सो अनो अलग न जाही लखिया गुर गुर दीना मीठा कह कबीर मेरी संकानासी सर्वन रंजन दीठा अवल अल्लाह 
नूर उपाया कुदरत के सब बन वाहगुरु जी का खालसा और वाहगुरु जी की Next, I'd like to call upon Ahmed Atiyah from the Muslim Association of Canada to come and uh, say a few words. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be with all of you. First of all, I wish to offer sincere condolences to all those affected by this horrific terrorist attack. Our thoughts and heartfelt prayers are with our brothers and sisters in New Zealand during this incredibly difficult time. It has been a week since a terrorist walked into two mosques in New Zealand and opened fire on Friday. Worshippers killing 51 people and injuring dozens more. In that time, Muslims around the world have been devastated at the news and communities have come together in mourning. In the face of such acts of terror, we must continue to unite around our shared Canadian values of inclusion and diversity. In Canada specifically, this horrific crime has reopened the wounds still raw from the Quebec massacre that was inflicted in January 2017. In the faces of the families who are suffering, it is easy to see the trauma, agony and resolve that we also went through here in Canada. We must reject violence and send a clear message to those groups that seek to divide us. The attack was carefully planned and designed to inspire Islamophobia across the world we call on our governments to confront the ideology that gives rise to these acts of terror and to recognize that Islamophobia has devastating consequences. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ahmed. I'd like to call to the stage uh, someone who is a champion for diversity both locally and globally, uh, Brother Mohammed Fakhi. Assalamu alaikum. Come on, Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. Are you cold? Well, no one is born feeling this kind of hate. They learn it from others. Even maybe from some political leaders, the ones who should be working to bring people together. We live today in a world in which extremists have grown bolder, where the hateful and the heartless find inspiration and support and where good people come together far often to mourn. I have raised my children to believe that Muslims, Jews, Christians, black, whites, all of us, we can all live in harmony. It's something I truly believe, but I find myself asking, do our children believe it anymore? How can they when they see the world with their own eyes? They do not want to feel different, but every Muslim feels different today. They are forced to feel different. They do not want to feel afraid. Those of us who celebrate the diversity of humanity, we are the majority. But our numbers don't matter anymore if we stay silent. In the face of hate, silence is like a wink. It says, I'm fine with what you're doing. Go ahead and push the boundaries a little bit more. To triumph over hate, we need a steady gaze. We need a firm spine. And most importantly, we need to speak up and speak out. We all need to speak up and speak out against those who seek to divide us and diminish us. To the Muslims who were killed, we can offer only a measure of peace and to their families a measure of solace and to the leader of this country to the leaders of this country we ask them to learn from the leadership of Patrick Brown and Bonnie Crombie and then together and then together all of us together we must resolve to chase hate back into the shadows and find a measure of harmony for our community, for our country, for our children, and for the rest of the world. 
This is our Canadian dream, and we should talk more often about it. Thank you. Next, I'd like to call upon uh, Chief of Police, Chris McCourt. And uh, as Chris makes his way up here, I did want to point out one thing. The day of the attack and the days following the attack on the weekend, uh, all of Peel Police uh, had at least one cruiser at our mosque in Brampton, and all the Toronto Regional Police uh, did similar things uh, in Toronto. So if we can just put our hands together and give a round of applause to our uh, Peel Police and our Chief, Chris. Thank you everyone. Salam Alaikum, good evening, and thank you very much. I'm joined here tonight by all of the executive team from Peter Regional Police and members of Peter Regional Police. I'm also joined tonight with other members of Emergency Service and members of our armed forces. Last Friday, there was a tragic incident in New Zealand and my brothers and sisters in law enforcement attended that scene to try and save lives and to try and prevent what happened in New Zealand. There is no room for hate. There is no room for violence in our communities. There shouldn't be, but unfortunately it exists. So tomorrow, our Muslim brothers and sisters will go back to their Friday prayers. And I can assure you, Peter Regional Police will be there for you tomorrow so that you can go and participate in Friday prayers, feel safe, feel confident that Peter Regional Police has your back. Everyone that has joined us here tonight, everyone is here unified to stand against hate. The signage that we see tonight Love is over hate. That's what we must remember, and there is no room for that in our community. Thank you very much, and have a good evening. Next, I'd like to call upon Molana Umar Subedar from Tor Brand Mati Masood. Good evening, everyone. I'm going to express a few words, and uh, these are just words of reflection. That is that the very evening, our time, when this had happened, one of the biggest mistakes I made, in my opinion, was to actually watch the video before I planned to go to sleep. I didn't know how intense it was going to be. But I'm sure for anyone who has watched that footage, there are no words that you can really express to articulate your feelings. And then there was reflection. I looked at my wife and my wife looked at me. We just realized, you know, how important each person in our life is. That we shouldn't take each other for granted. My wife was saying that that could have been you. Right? That could have been our children. Who planned to go to the masjid next day because it was March break. So my message is, that don't take anyone in your life for granted. Don't take your colleagues for granted. Don't take your neighbors for granted. Don't take the community for granted. Every single person in our lives is special. Appreciate each other. The second thing is that let's not become victims of any form of supremacy in whatever shape it may be in. That is because it's a cancer. And our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he put a heart. I should say he had put a stop to this form of supremacy by telling us that those people, the only people who are excelling in the eyes of God are the people who have piety and piety is found in the heart and the only being that, could, that can read hearts is God alone. No one else can read a per another person's heart. So therefore he has put an end to all forms of supremacy and leave our status in the eyes of God and let God judge who we are. The final thing I'm going to say is that let's not let our brothers and sisters who have lost their lives in New Zealand 
let's not forget their legacy. Let's not forget how important they were. And the one thing that we can all go away with is that let's make a more active effort to reach out to those people who feel somewhat frightened, who, who feel somewhat threatened. Reach out to them, let them know who you are. And let's end off with the very last words the first martyr of that massacre had uttered, Hello brother. Hamid Al Ansar Masjid. While he's come, uh, coming up here, I would like to just acknowledge um, two of our guests that are here tonight who are MPPs in Brampton, Amarjot Sandhu and Prabhmeet Sarkaria. So thank you for joining us today. Assalamu alaikum. To everyone here, we greet you with the peace and blessings of Almighty God. Uh, as I was sitting uh, uh, back in the seat and hearing uh, the wonderful words and prayers uh, of our faith community uh, leaders and of our politicians and our chief and so on. One of the things I reflected upon as I sat is, uh, is to think about what happened in the aftermath and the day after or the week after the killings in Quebec City and those who lost their lives and were killed in Pittsburgh at the synagogue and will eventually happen to the mosque and the two mosques in New Zealand in Christchurch. What will happen is that people, Muslims and people of faith and our Jewish cousins and anyone who's lost their lives in places of worship, they will, the people will return to those places of worship. And the reason why they return to those places of worship, even though such tragedy happened, is because they have a hope. They have a hope. What do they hope for? They hope that their faith and what makes them as uh, what makes them and drives them is a love that no one is going to come and cause harm to them. That's their hope. They have a love of it. And they have a love of their God. And they have a love of their God that is a that God is a protecting God. And so it drives them back more so after events like these and tragedies like these it drives them back why does it drive them back because it's a way to soften their hearts and it's a way to end to it's a way to end hatred and it's a way to say to those who would perpetrate such crimes that we will be that we will not stop in the worship of our lord and we will not stop our children from going to our places of worship and we will not stop from doing community activism and with the faith communities. And we will not stop with the good works that emanate and come out of our mosques and our synagogues and our churches and our gurdwaras and our mandirs and so on. We will not stop. And this is the message that we have to give to our children in order to secure their feeling of that God is a protecting God is 
that we take them back to our places of worship and that we worship freely and that they hold their hands up and they join others in prayers and they see the wonderful work of the interfaith communities that is occurring that they see our brothers and our sisters of other faith coming together in our different places of worship standing together in unity and calling upon the God that we call upon that there because that their issues forth and comes forth love and there is comes forth harmony and that we stand together united and this is what we have to do to our for ourselves and for our hearts and for the hearts of our children so we thank the faith community and all of you for coming out and we leave, we leave uh, tonight feeling vigorated that there is a love and that love is going to spread and that love will overcome all hatred and overcome the, the bigotry and the biasness that people, a small, uh, a small uh, amount of people have. I thank you. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi barakatuh. Um, as the program comes to a conclude, I want to just quickly invite um, Imam Faisal from Islamic Forum of Canada, if he's here, to come up and say a few words. If not, then uh, we'll proceed with the Ilahi singing led by Tathweek a donor uh, from the Canadian Sufi Cultural Center. Um, Assalamu alaikum, shalom, namaste, sat suri akal, peace to you and to your loved ones, O residents of beautiful city Brampton and the servants of the city of Brampton from Mayor and uh, to all the other who are serving this beautiful city, all the dignitaries. Unfortunately, murders started with Cain and Abel is still continuing. Not one place, but all over the world. By terrorists, thieves, tribes, nations and more. 13th century poet, jurist, Islamic scholar, Sufi mystic, and saint Rumi, who is well known all over the world, he said, Rumi said 700 years ago, tolerance, compassion, empathy, and unconditional love is the only remedy for this sickness called hate, greed, arrogance, injustice, and selfish. Only unconditional love, regardless faith, race, nationality, gender, love, respect, love. Now, members of Canadian Sufi Cultural Center are praying with you all for the martyrs and their families patience to their hearts now let us all pray in heart or out loud and please let's salute all 200,000 prophets including Noah, Abraham, Moses, Jesus and Muhammad, all 200 prophets, names known and unknown. <coughs> Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar. Allah, who I 
be true human beings and love each other inshallah salam alaikum shalom namaz as we wrap up the program i'd like to call upon uh sheikh jafar from the muslimin islamic center Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I've been asked to recite a closing prayer uh, to this gathering. Uh, but before I do, I'd like to take this opportunity to invite all the faith leaders uh, to please join me. Uh, as the mayor joined in the beginning with all of his counselors, I'd like to have all the faith leaders join me in this prayer from all faiths as we say a final prayer together. Um, a prayer of peace, a prayer of yearning to God for a better time. The prayer that I'm about to recite uh, is taken from a prayer written by Imam Zainul Abidin, uh, the great grandson of the Prophet. Uh, and we begin, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of God, the most compassionate, the most merciful. O one, O unique, O eternal refuge, O reliever of worry. O remover of grief, O merciful in this world and the next, and compassionate in both. Bless Muhammad and his household. Relieve my worry, remove my grief, and take away my affliction. O the one who welcomes the departed, elevate the status of those that were wrongfully killed. O the one who provides strength in times of difficulty, Give all those that were injured the courage and strength that they need during this difficult time. O oh, the one who heals, provide healing and comfort to those that witness the brutality. O oh, the one who guides towards the truth, guide those that were blinded and misguided and awaken their hearts and minds. O oh, the one who is most loving, instill love in the hearts that harbor hatred. O oh, the one who is the ultimate protector, safeguard us all from all evil and hurt. Wa akhiru da'wan and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Ameen ya rabbal alameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you for that uh, beautiful dua. Um, as we wrap up, I want to thank you all, first of all, for coming here tonight. Um, could have been colder, so we're very blessed that the weather has cooperated today. Um, I do, uh, real quick, I will just mention we are getting close to Maghrib Salat time, and there are arrangements inside. Just please come and check with us uh, if you need to pray before you head home. I do want to give two um, quick but very important thank yous before everyone leaves. Uh, the police and parents. So number one, um, I want to thank all the Peel Regional Police that are sort of lined along the back there. And... Um, no, thank you not just for being here today, but for being here with us every day in, in, in times of distress and then on all of these everyday situations, for being heroes for my kids, for um, you know, being the ones that, you know, Allah sends us our protection through people. So thank you to, the, to our police services. Thank you. Um, and then lastly, on a bit of a personal, I, I actually want to say thank you to all of the parents here that have brought their children and I tell you as a mother of four boys my guys are here they ran off to the park and then they came back um, I went to Juma Salat it was March break like it was for all of you 
and uh, I was looking forward to taking them to the mosque on Friday. And I'll be honest, I didn't take them with me. Partly out of fear for their concern. I've got four boys, they were going to be separated from me. Um, but I wasn't so worried that something would happen, but I'll be honest with you, I was worried for myself about the conversation that I was going to have to have. Why are the police here at the mosque? What happened mummy last night? Why do people hate us as Muslims? That was just a conversation that I wasn't prepared to have. But, you know, to have Ali, a young person, stand next to me and to all of you who, you know, took the courage to, to be leaders in your household and in the community to bring your children and to show them that together we can gather here today in, in, in faith and solidarity and harmony and to say, look around you, there are far more good people and beautiful hearts around you than bad ones. And I know it takes a lot of courage to bring your children out to this. And, and we do this for our future generations, which is them. Um, so I thank you for all of that. Thank you so much for coming. And um, thank you. The, the final words I will say. I think the big message here is that there's, there's a lot of thoughts, but we need to move to action. So a quick quote by a man of action, um, the, the admirable Malcolm X, who said, we need more light about each other. Light increases understanding. Understanding creates love. Love creates patience. And patience creates unity. Thank you so much for attending tonight. Please drive home safely.